one month before the Iowa caucuses, former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee now leads the polls there, which puts him for greater scrutiny. And one incident from his past is haunting him, the release of a convicted rapist from prison who then committed a double murder. Paul Boyd reports two women whose lives were changed forever by that convict are now speaking out. Don't let him go! Women protesting in Little Rock, Arkansas, demanding a convicted rapist be kept behind bars. Among them, the rapist victim. Over the past 12 years, I have been able to share the heavy burden of my rape with very few people. The focus of their anger, then Governor Mike Huckabee, who was considering releasing Wayne Dumont from prison. It was 1996. Today, a decade later, the Wayne Dumont case is haunting rising presidential hopeful Mike Huckabee once again. It was a horrible case from start to finish for everybody for the victims, for him. The Wayne Dumont case has been controversial from the moment of his arrest back in 1985. While he was awaiting trial, two vigilantes broke into his family's home and castrated him, then burned the house down. Incredibly, local sheriff Coolridge Conley displayed Dumont's severed body parts in a jar on his desk. Inside Edition interviewed Dumont behind bars. Disgraceful for a law enforcement officer to lower himself, to condescend to the point that he would take body parts, put them in formaldehyde, and look here, you know what this is? The way the jury found Wayne Dumont guilty of rape. Dumont was sentenced to life plus 20 years in prison, but he continued to protest his innocence. Then, a few years later, a parole board recommended clemency. But Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton, a distant cousin of the victim, refused to release him. By the time Mike Huckabee became governor, Dumont had been behind bars 12 years for a crime many believed he did not fit. He was granted parole in 1999. Within months of his release, Dumont struck again. Authorities say he raped and killed two women in Kansas City, including Carol Sue Shields. Now, her mother is determined to make sure the Dumont case haunts Huckabee's campaign. If he hadn't been uh, let out, I, I really think that she'd still be here today. I just don't think he's president material. And Ashley Stevens, who Dumont raped in 1985, is also blaming Huckabee. I just tried to do everything I could to keep him in jail because I knew that was going to happen. And I felt so sorry for those families. Huckabee claims he had no control over the ultimate decision to release Dumont made by the parole board. But three former members of the parole board claim Huckabee pressured them to grant Dumont parole. What pressure did you feel from then Governor Mike Huckabee? Well, when the governor appeared before the board and indicated his position about Dumont, that's pressure in itself. We'd never had a governor to come over and mention a case to us. Mike Huckabee says that he was invited to that parole board hearing. You disagree? I disagree. You're saying he's outright lying? He's not only untruthful about that, but he's untruthful also about his input. The real tragedy is there are some families that are hurting and grieving and some now are wanting to exploit them for political purposes. Dumont died from throat cancer in prison in 2005, but the impact of his crimes are still reverberating through the presidential campaign of 2008.